AMD is in complete shock right now. We finally learn when RX 9000 stock returns, AMD is going all in, and Nvidia just released their new flagship GPU. Welcome everyone to Gamer Mel. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, in a follow up to my recent report about AMD killing it with their newest RX 9000 GPUs, we now know just how insane this launch has been. As you can see right down here, this was originally done by Benchlife, who attended the AIPC Summit in Beijing, and they're reporting that the initial launch stock of the Radeon RX 9070 series was almost sold out. Now, you're probably thinking, almost sold out? Well, I'm sure this is referring to uh, GPUs that board partners are selling for absurd prices, and people who are willing to pay those prices are likely done, so everyone else is just waiting for it to come down. But they are basically sold out. Either way, as you can see here, it says, Recently on March 6, the Radeon RX 9070 XT and RX 9070 based on the RDNA 4 GPU architecture were released. The initial global supply of over 200,000 units of these graphics cards was almost sold out. That's over 200,000, which really brings into context the recent story that I covered where Andy said that this uh, demand was un unprecedented. They were not joking. Basically, AMD is in complete shock right now. Basically, they had no clue that they were going to sell this many GPUs this quickly. I mean, we're talking 200,000 plus GPUs in like a day. I mean, yes, okay, they have been selling more and more since then, of course, but that initial supply was almost certainly the vast majority of that. And it also sort of explains why they ran out fairly quickly while AMD was kind of talking it up. Now, don't get me wrong, they stayed in stock for significantly longer than really any of NVIDIA's GPUs, probably all of them combined. So they definitely did have a lot, but they probably thought that it was enough for weeks. Well, it clearly wasn't. With all of that said, if you want your best chance to find a next-gen GPU at a great price, your best shot is definitely to check out your local Micro Center, the only store that you can visit in person to find all the latest hardware for your PC, from motherboards to cases, coolers, CPUs, GPUs, and more. Micro Center seriously has it all. I actually built my first ever PC from parts I got at Micro Center, and they sponsored today's video so I can tell you all about this month's Monitor Madness event, a huge sale on a wide range of monitors that's only for the month of March, so you don't have much time left. Plus, if you're anywhere near Santa Clara, California, Micro Center is opening a brand new store, and when you visit my link, fill out this form, and take it to the Santa Clara store when it opens, you'll get a free 128 gig flash drive. You can't beat that, and don't forget to check out their awesome deals on monitors. That link is also in the description below. And next up for today, I do at least have some good news because, well, this one originally comes from a Chinese graphics card maker. Specifically, we're talking Yastin. And according to them, well, I'll just kind of read this to you. It says, hello, everyone. Thank you for the support. We have received a lot of messages and would love to inform you now the supply is unstable, but we will restock every week. Please don't be frustrated if you didn't get it. The supply will continue, I'm assuming, continue being stable and it will be available after April, meaning they are expecting for supply to actually stabilize after April or seems like maybe early April, sometime during April, basically it should stabilize fairly soon. We're talking a month away. So for those who weren't able to purchase a RX 9000 GPU, especially for those who weren't able to get it at MSRP, because at least according to AMD, the MSRP is the real deal. They supposedly are not going to be raising that, meaning if you're waiting for these GPUs at MSRP, you likely won't have to wait too much longer. And next up, we have a pretty wild story about AMD's next-gen APUs that I think tells us something really big about their next-gen GPUs. As you can see right here, it says, AMD's next-generation Zen 6-based Medusa Point mobile APUs will not feature RDNA 4 graphics as previously speculated. It says, according to recent code discoveries in AMD GPU open drivers on GitHub, specifically, the device ID associated with RDNA 4 architecture has been reserved for only discrete GPUs, making it clear that their next-gen APUs 
are still likely going to have RDNA 3.5. Now, this may sound like a bad thing, but this has got a lot of people thinking that AMD is set to go all in on their next gen architecture, UDNA. Remember that AMD has already officially announced their UDNA architecture. Now, this graph isn't anything official. Well, it is, but this was back during RDNA. But basically, what it is, is it's a, set to be a really big change from their current RDNA and CDNA. Remember that quite a while back, before these architectures, AMD had GCN. And basically what that was, was a general purpose architecture that encompassed both their compute and gaming segments. But then with RDNA and CDNA, they decided to separate those architectures. So they had two completely different architectures depending on uh, which type of GPU they were making. Well, now they're going back to UDNA. And this really makes it seem like they don't really care all that much about RDNA 4, likely because they're prepping for UDNA. Don't forget, once again, this has officially already been confirmed by AMD themselves. So they certainly are really preparing for this. And they actually did a similar thing with their APUs back with Vega. Don't forget, for quite a while, their APUs still had Vega until finally when they were ready, for RDNA, they put that on the GPUs and it was really a massive jump, meaning that there's at least a chance that UDNA could be a serious jump in performance and AMD is just kind of preparing everything for that. And this could be another reason why they only went for mid-range for RDNA 4. So instead of focusing so much on that architecture, they could really put resources into UDNA. Now, a lot of this, of course, is speculation, but I will say that this definitely points at it. Time, as always, will tell. And lastly for today, I told you it was coming and Nvidia has officially announced it. I'm of course talking their new flagship just monster of a GPU, the RTX Pro 6000 Blackwell card. And as you can see, just like with that leak, well, it, it looks exactly like I had shown all of you. Now, I will say it does have a server edition, which would be this one right here. It doesn't have fans or anything. It's passively cooled. But then is the Blackwell Workstation Edition. And yes, that's this card right here. And yeah, let's just get right to the specs. Starting things off, as you can see, this bad boy comes with a whopping 24,064 cores, which is a little over 10, I think it's like 10.5% more cores than the RTX 5090. Not only that, but it does come with 96 gigabytes of GDDR7 with ECC, so error correction memory. And unlike other workstation cards, this bad boy comes with a whopping 600 watts TBP. Remember, other workstation cards typically have much less, like I think the last one was 300 watts. Well, this one actually has more than the RTX 5090, meaning you can expect some serious performance. And in fact, they also claim single precision performance is at 125 teraflops and that single precision FP32 is exactly the kind of performance you want for gaming. And this 125 teraflops is right at 19% more. So yeah, you should expect a fairly decent jump in performance. But with that said, and I actually have a couple benchmarks that have already come out for this, but while you should expect at least some performance boost over the RTX 5090, do not buy this. I mean, this is likely set to be six, seven, eight thousand dollars So it's absolutely not going to be worth, even if it got the full 19%, it's almost certainly not going to be worth it. Plus you have the fact that it doesn't come with uh, GeForce drivers. It comes with their workstation drivers, which are better, but they're really not made for gaming. Either way, let's go ahead and talk these benchmarks. Now, I will say they're actually very disappointing here, um, but you can see it says the, so we actually have it right here. Uh, this is purely a path tracing benchmark. It's game tech bench. You can see here it features full path tracing. Should be a nice demonstration of how powerful the new card is. But as you can see here at 4K, it only beat the 5090 by 5%. And then this one over here at 1440p, it actually lost to the 5090 by a few percentage points. So, 
yeah, it's really not doing all that great. Then we have right here, it beats the 5090 by a couple percentage points, but I will say this probably is an issue with drivers or something along those lines when they were testing it, maybe they're early drivers. I mean, I'm really not sure, or it's just the fact that these are workstation drivers and they're not exactly made for things like gaming. Still, this is a pretty wild GPU, but do not buy it for gaming. So while that does it for today, what do you think about Nvidia's new GPU? And what about AMD's next gen UDNA? Do you think it's gonna be a huge boost? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out Micro Center down in the description below to get your free 128 gig flash drive. And as always, have a great day.